In this presentation, we will understand special program number 12, counting digits, letters and special characters. So without any further delay, let's get started. The topic of this presentation is special program, counting digits, letters and special characters. As we know the topic of this lecture, let's now look at the problem statement first before writing the program. So let's look at the problem statement. Write a program that accepts a string and counts the number of digits, letters and special characters of that string. So we need to write a program that accepts a string from the user and it must have the capability to count the number of digits, letters and special characters of that string. So if there are digits in that string, then it must count them separately. If it has letters, then it must count them separately. And if it has some special characters, then also it must count it separately. We'll keep the count in three different variables and then we will print them accordingly. Now, as we know what is the problem statement, let's write the program for the same. First, we will ask the user to enter a string and we can do that with the help of input method. This time we don't need int method, we don't need any type of typecasting because this time we want to receive a string from the user and we will manipulate that string accordingly. We will receive the string in this variable called s. Now after this, what is the next step? We need three different variables to keep track of the count of digits, letters and special characters. Here are these three variables. d l and o and each of these variables are initialized to zero. d represents the count of digits, l represents the count of letters and o represents the count of other characters or special characters. Now as we have these four different variables where s will store the string, d will store the count of digits, L will store the count of letters and O will store the count of other characters or special characters. Now, the next step is to write the for loop to iterate over each character of the string and it must have the capability to check whether the character is a digit, is a letter or it is a special character. For this purpose, we can write this for statement. For C in S, this allows us to access each character of this string. Each character will be stored here in this variable c. Now within this for loop we can check if c dot is digit. This is digit function allows us to check whether the character at this point in time is a digit or not. If it is the case that the character is a digit, then we will increment the count of d by 1. Why are we incrementing the count of d here? Because if the character is a digit, then we need to increment the count of d as d represents the count of digits. Now after this, we need to check if it is the case that c is a letter. So here is alpha function allows us to check whether the character is a letter or not. If it is the case that the character is a letter, then we will increment the count of L by 1. Otherwise, we will increment the count of O by 1. If the current character is neither a digit nor a letter, then in that case, we will increment O by 1, which means that that character must be a special character. After the execution of this for loop, we know that we will have appropriate counts in these variables D, L and O. And we are now ready to print them on the screen. For this purpose, we need three print functions. The first print function will print digits on the screen like this. Digits, then colon, and then the count of digits. We know this is the f string. So this f string allows us to embed variables within the string. And that's what we are doing here. We need the second print function to print letters on the screen. And we need the third print function to print other characters or special characters. I hope this program is clear. If it is somehow unclear, 
Now it will be clear to you because now we will execute this program line by line. So let's look at the line number one, which is s equal to input enter a string. We know that after execution of this line, we will get this output on the screen that is enter a string. This prompt we will get. Now the user can enter a string. Let's say the user has entered just breathe at the rate one, two, three, four. Now we know that this variable will receive this string. So let's create this variable. Now this variable s is pointing to this object with this value. This is the string just breathe at the rate one, two, three. Now what is the next step after this? We need to initialize these three variables d, l and o to zero. That's what we need to do. So let's create these three variables d, l and o and let's initialize them to zero. After this, we need to execute this line for c in s. We know that after execution of this line, we will receive this character j, which is the first character of the string in this variable called c. Now c is pointing to this object with this character j. After this, we need to check is c a digit? No, it is not the case. C is a letter. Therefore, this condition is satisfied. This elif block will be executed because C dot is alpha is true. Hence, L must be incremented by one. This means that this must be replaced by one. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement once again. This time, the character that we will receive here is A, small a, because after J, we have A. Now let's check whether A is a digit. No. Is it the case that A is a letter? Yes. This statement must be true. Hence, L must be incremented by 1. This means this time we have 2 here. The next character is S. So we'll get S over here and 3 over here. This is what we can observe. After this, we have P. So we'll get P over here and 4 over here. Similarly, it can easily be observed that after this, we will get 5 here because we have R here. Then we will get 6 here, then 7, then 8. After this, the L will not be incremented because after T, we have at the rate. Now, we know that the next character that we will receive here is at the rate. Therefore, this else block will be executed. Because this at the rate character is neither a digit nor it is a letter. Therefore, the else block must be executed and this means that O must be incremented by 1. Hence, this time we will get 1 over here. Now, after this, the next step is to execute this statement. We know that after execution of this statement, we will receive 1 here. Because after at the rate, we have 1 over here. Now, let's execute this statement. We know that this time we will get true here because c dot is digit is true. This is the digit. Therefore, we need to increment d by 1. Hence, we will get 1 over here. Now, we need to execute this statement once again. This time we know that we will receive 2 here because the next digit is 2. Now, this means that this statement will be executed and this becomes true. Hence, d must be incremented by 1. Therefore, we will get 2 here. In this way, we can continue. We know that the next two characters are digits as well. Therefore, we will get 3 here. Then we will get 4 here. In this way, we can observe that the last character received here is 4. Here, d is 4, l is 8 and o is 1. This means that we have a total of 4 digits eight letters and one special character in this string. I hope this is clear. Now we need to execute this print function. After execution of this print function, we will get this statement on the screen. Digits colon four. Because we know that D is four, so we'll get four here. After execution of this print function, we will get letters colon then eight. After execution of this print function, we will get other characters colon then 1. So there are a total of 4 digits, 8 letters and 1 special character in this string. I hope it is clear how this program works. 
how are we getting this output now we are ready to execute this program in visual studio code i have opened this folder python work in this visual studio code and within this folder i have created this file count digits letters special.py in this file i have written the same code which we have seen in the presentation now let's execute this code for this we need to open the new terminal and now we need to type python white space then name of this file followed by .py extension let's do this now let's hit enter let's enter a string let's say just breathe at the rate 1 2 3 4 Let's hit enter again. We are getting four here because we have a total of four digits in the string. We are getting eight here because we have a total of eight letters in the string, and we are getting one here because we have one special character in the string. And this is the correct output we are receiving. Now let's execute this command once again. This time let's enter world. and then exclamation mark let's hit enter we are getting zero here because in this string we do not have any digits we are getting five here because we have a total of five letters in the string and we are getting one here because we have one special character in the string so we have verified the results that we are getting here and this code is working correctly so now let's get back to our presentation So now we know that our code is working correctly and this means that we are done with this topic special program counting digits letters and special characters and this means that we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one